Hi there. I just noticed that our camera is getting more and more cockeyed Isn't every that wild? week. Look at that. Anyway, excuse yeah. me. <laughs> My name is Granny Rocks, otherwise known as Beth Green. And this is the Granny Rock Show. And this oh, guy over here is... This is James Maynard, otherwise known as Sweet Baby James. And I'm handling the chat tonight, so please let us know. If you'd like to say something to Beth, chat with us, and I'll be happy to pass it on to her, and she can respond to you. I love it. I can respond to you live, right? Yeah. Right here on the show, as long as you are talking to me when the show is live. Yep. Otherwise, I will answer you later. So, anyway... Uh, tonight, I want to talk about the trick to being relaxed, calm, more peaceful, all that good stuff. Now, some of you are already going to know this, and so you're going to say, oh, but maybe you need a reminder, or maybe some of you know it in your head, but don't practice it very well, or some of you think it's a stupid idea, and uh, this would be a very good opportunity for us to talk about that. So, so before I start that, Sweet Baby James is going to introduce tell you a little show? bit of, yes, introduce You the have show. come to Granny Rocks, where every Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. Pacific Time, we have the opportunity to hear the sharings of Granny's wisdom, her wit, and her very uncommon sense. So thank you for joining us. And now, here's Granny. And in the meantime, you get to go online and see if we're broadcasting. Oh, yeah. Right. <laughs> what a concept. What a concept. So if we haven't said hello to you yet, that's because we're a little be behind schedule. We just came back from a trip. Yes. So now, there is no question that life is extremely stressful. Okay, maybe you're above it. I <laughs> am not <laughs> above it. I find it's like, oh, there, it's not this, it's that. If it's not that, it's this. Oh, we're not plugged in to the Internet, James. How so? I see it up there. I don't know. Look, we're not plugged into the Internet. So could you please hardwire us? Oh, look. It is hardwired. Over honey. There. It's showing that we are on not hardwired. So I don't know why, but we aren't hardwired. So could you I'll double check that. that? Yeah. Yes. And we have, while, uh, while he's doing that, I'm going to say that we have a thumbs up. Oh, my God. Look at here. Look at all these responses. Tra okay. We're you on fixed, the Internet. You fixed. Yeah, honey, oh, okay. Just we went off the Internet. Us, yeah. Okay. No, we are on the Internet, but we're not hardwired. So Tracy says, uh, Tracy says hello. Hello, Tracy. Blanquita hmm. says hello, Beth and Place James. Place to check is over here. And that's a wonderful thing. Hello. And hello, Blanquita. And she gives us a thumbs up. And Catalina says, good evening. And has all kinds of pretty uh, images. Good evening to you. Angeline Kimball. I don't know you. Hello. I'm sorry. I wasn't supposed to say your last name. <laughs> Todd says we're broadcasting. We are. But uh, we're just not hardwired. <coughs> And now we are. Wonderful. So yes. It's more stable this way. It's working. Thank you, Angeline. <laughs> Elizabeth <laughs> says hello. So. Yes, indeed. The thing is, when we're on Wi-Fi, it can go in and out. But when we're hardwired, we're, we're tough. Okay. And Elizabeth sends a heart of love. Oh, we love that. <laughs> so, so, as I was saying, everybody knows the life is tough, except those people who are in delusions. And it's, I think, it's very tough anyway. But there's always a reason to feel stressed. There's always something to be upset about. There's something to be scared about. There's, you know, your age, your youth, your health, your children's health. Your finances. Your finances. This is, I'm going to get the house. I'm not going to get the house. Oh, my God, I'm going to get the house, and I'm going to have to pay for the house. I'm not going to get. I look, it looks like we have another. Yes, uh, Terry. Our oh, sweet Terry. niece, Terry, has oh. said hello and oh. sends a heart of love. Oh. Hello. hello. Bless you, Terry. And Todd gives hugs, sending hugs. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Always good to have hugs in the middle of life. 
So I don't need a <laughs> pandemic. I just need to be alive. So I was thinking about this. So I want to give you an example of how we can stay relaxed. So anyway. Uh, like that, for example. <laughs> that was very relaxed. Did you notice that? <laughs> and I, I think we have another person already. It says, James, your microphone is distorted. Distorting. Uh, again. Well, again. Uh, I'll put it lower. Yeah. There we go. How's that? I hope that is better. I'm going to turn you down, honey. I'm not turning you down. I'm just turning Aww. you down. So um, anyway, this morning we had an experience. We had gone camping. In a very comfortable motorhome, I In might add. Yes, but <laughs> was nevertheless, we were camping and we were away. Uh, we had no internet, of course, because we were, you know, in the middle of nowhere. And James is the only one who can drive because those of you who know me know that I am very disabled and extremely ill and can't drive and can't do much of anything except sit there and eat the food that James prepares for me. So anyway. We have a wonderful message from Adamina. Oh, what? I love you so much. Much hugs. Mm. And she says, los quiero muchos abrazos. Oh, uh, thank you. Muchas gracias, gracias. Adamina. So. Here oh, and there's another one. Oh, my God. Amy says, hi, you two sweeties, and sends two hearts of love. Thank you. Hi, you too. I love there. So what the situation was is that James got up this morning, and he was dizzy. Mm. He had what we call vertigo. So it was like, Meh. Okay, and he has to drive, and he has to cook, and he has to take care of everything, because I'm just sitting there waiting. <laughs> Where's my <laughs> breakfast? You know, he knows I can't do anything, except play the piano, and I don't know how I can play the piano. Well, you did do one thing before that. What? You only helped me to shift and change my entire life direction and uh, feel more integrated and whole, that's all. Yeah, well, that, that is a, a gift of mine, that I, I have a gift, a spiritual gift, but I don't have much on the physical plane. So anyway, so he's got vertigo, and we have like, uh, 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 we have to leave at 1 o'clock. Right. And we have to meet the roofer when we get home. And we have this guy that we're meeting uh, with the piano. And right. then, you know, at 3 o'clock. And, 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 and I have to get rest. And I have to get rest and before the show. And it's like, oh, oh my God, we, you know, what are we going <laughs> to do? You know what I'm saying? And so there was just a moment, just a moment of stress. So I'm saying to James, maybe we shouldn't try to go home, you know. Because if you're dizzy, that's not a good thing to be driving and dizzy at the same time, right? Beware, James is a dizzy driver. Watch out. That's right. So, so what are we going to do? And I said, James, maybe we need to stay another night. No! We're on a mission. We have We're on a mission. <laughs> we can't stay another night. Oh no. You know, think of all the things and the this and the that and the oh e e e e e e I'm like, well, you know, maybe we should stay another But you know, I I didn't know either. So we kept talking about it and talking about and then he did this maneuver to try to get his over it's his. It's called vertigo. the Epley maneuver and it's supposed right. to help you get rid of uh, so thi this is one small example in a world of examples, but I want to show you the example. So now, what is the way to relax is to have faith. Now, faith does not have to be... <laughs> it does not have to be religious. You can have faith in yourself, and you can have faith that things are going to work out right. I hate when people do that. I hate the people who walk around saying, oh, everything is perfect, everything is perfect, everything is perfect, everything is perfect. <laughs> I don't think everything is perfect. But, you know, they have a point. But what it is in order to do that, to say everything is perfect, is you have to convince yourself, whether it's true or not, that what is happening is what you need. See, we have fear that we're not going to get our mm. needs met. My needs won't be met. My needs won't be met. Oh, my needs won't be met. Oh, my <laughs> needs. Oh, no. Oh, no. I have a need for this. I have a need for breakfast. I have a need for this. I have so my needs are going to be met. So supposing you could say, you know, all right, we thought we had all these things to do. 
all these appointments and uh, I had an appointment with rest and all that right <laughs> and supposing I say no we need to be here tonight mm -hmm. we just need to be here because of the energy because of the trees and so well, what about the show I don't have a piano with me in the van so you know which is our <laughs> motor home we have this little van there's no piano in there so I said well maybe tonight I need to just talk without playing the piano. So I was convincing myself that I needed to stay there. You understand? Yeah. So the faith means I trust that my needs will be met. Mm -hmm. We knew how we could get on the internet and keep the show going. That's right. So that need would be met. That's right. I could at least, and I see a bug on the ceiling, and my need to have that bug removed does not need to be met right now. Anyway, so the next thing I see is James is feeling a little bit better. So we have it all worked out. We're going to stay another night. And then he says, well, I think I'm a little better. So he's saying, ah, we really need to go home. You, uh, you get what I'm saying? No, we really need to go home because that's what, you know, and we need to do this. And then yeah, I did that uh, maneuver, that anti-vertigo maneuver on the picnic table. But it was very questionable, <laughs> nevertheless. So maybe we needed to have an accident on the way home, see? You just never know. And I was able to rationalize whatever happened and say, that's exactly what I needed. Now, <laughs> there are things that are, okay, this is not the most tragic thing in the world. You know, you have a stroke. And you're all scrambled up. And you're, you're, you're saying, uh, I, I really need this. I, I need to have a stroke because I need to know what that's like. Or my husband starts to get better in his brain. And then all of a sudden, he gets worse. A and so what do I say? I need him to get worse. Now, I have to figure out <laughs> why I need him to get worse. Or one more time, after a million efforts, my health still sucks big time. Right? You get it? Are you getting? I mean, sometimes it's very serious, and sometimes it's not so serious. But if you could start practicing like we did, and we work together to work through what we should do, and so finally it occurred what should we go should we not go we didn't know we didn't know should we go should we go and then it occurred to us maybe we could just postpone leaving an hour and see how we do in an hour but oh no 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 you see we have to have certainty we have a need for certain well maybe we don't have a need for certainty right so whatever right. life is throwing at me i'm trying to convince myself that i need it Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So that is the trick. Well, it turns out when we asked ourselves intuitively, should we wait till we were late to leave two o'clock and see what happened? We got yes, both of us. We really harmonized. We needed the experience of being confused and not being in harmony. And then we did harmonize. And believe it or not, we left at two o'clock. And that's the time we said that we needed to leave by. Give us that extra hour. Right. And it worked out perfectly. And we told the ranger who was ready to throw us out <laughs> that <laughs> if we couldn't, could we stay another night? And he said, no problem. Well, he didn't say no problem. He said, we'll try to squeeze you in. But I wasn't going to worry about it, right? Because if we needed to boondock or sleep on the street, oh, well, we must need that experience. Well, if we slept on the street, it would be in the motorhome, in, motor in the home. comfort of our bed. That's right. <laughs> By the way, we have a couple of more uh, greetings. Good. Wilson says, greetings from Brazil. Ooh, obrigada. Oh, yes. And Elizabeth says, greetings also from Cardiff, California. Oh, this is the other oh, Elizabeth. Elizabeth. How yes, nice. Hello. We're going to be seeing you later at yeah. our program. We have a show, at, not a show, we have a group after yes. to talk about this topic. And Elizabeth is joining us tonight, mm -hmm. which she must need because we need, must need her to be there because she's going to be there, right? So we arrived at a feeling of faith that somehow things were going to work out one way or the other. Either we were going to stay or we were going to go. But or we, we did were going to leave we and have an accident. We just wanted another hour to see if, <laughs> if that would work. Right. 
We had faith that somehow it would work out. It is, see, faith, which doesn't have to be religious. is an important factor to relaxation. I have faith that everything is going to work out. And as I am approaching death, for example, I have faith that I need to die. Or <laughs> that, oh no, not I'm sick again. Oh, I have another pain. Oh no, another. I need that pain. I need. So I am not going to say, oh, this is perfect. Oh, I love it. Oh, it's wonderful. I, it's divine. It's a, I'm just saying, oh, okay, I need this. I need this experience. And if I say that whatever happens is what I need, well, then I can relax. Mm. So it's really hard when it's something really basic, like I'm hungry. And, 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 and I'm hungry, and there's nobody to get me any food, which happens to me quite a bit, right? Because uh, I can't cook, and I, some people just don't have any money. And, you know, it's like, well, maybe I need this experience. And maybe I need this experience, maybe not because I really need to be hungry, but because I need to find a way to get money that I haven't thought of yet. Maybe I need to be thinking about what I need to do to get out of this bad situation, right? Mm -hmm. So it can be so many different things that we need. See, we have flexibility in our rationalizations. And certainly uh, it comes down to our basic needs, food, shelter, clothing, internet, cell phones, <laughs> our on? basic needs, the basic like needs. cell phones. <laughs> yes, indeed. Uh, you know, we grew up when, when I was a child, we had a party line. We didn't even have a <laughs> landline <laughs> that we had. We shared the phone with a neighbor. That's what, <laughs> we didn't even know that we needed a cell phone because they didn't exist. There are so many needs. So, I you know, I need to play the piano because it lifts my spirits. But if I lose my piano, then I must find another way to lift my spirits. Mm -hmm. And maybe I need to find that other way. This is a very expensive way of lifting my spirits. <laughs> so what do you think of that? So what I'd like you to do is I want you to think about something where you're feeling really tense. And I'm sure you can find something. I mean, surely we're not the only nuts on the block. Think about something where you feel really tense. I need my partner to get well. I need my job to pay me more. I need, and you know, say, okay, let's say none of those things happen. So what about that do I need? See? Do I need to look for another job? Do I need to change my expenses? Uh, do I need to be more accepting? Do I really need to be perfect? Do I need to be there on time? Do I need to be more assertive? Do I need to know what the future will bring? Oh my God, that's a big one, right? I need to know, and I need to know now, what's gonna happen, what's gonna happen? And uh, is this gonna bill gonna pass? And who's gonna be elected? And, and, and you, you know what I mean, who, what? Who? And, and Beth, don't you always, uh, no, 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 I didn't mean always, don't you also talk about intention and allowance? You can intend whatever, but then make allowances for the universe and the co-creation of the collective and other individuals allowance for what does happen. That's right. So I have you can a book relax in that too. called Living with Reality, and it's a free download from my website, bethgreen.org. And it's a really good book. And one of the platforms, one of the st spiritual steps in it is to co we co-create with the universe in a subtle dance of intention and allowance. And a lot of people believe that they can manifest reality and they must need to believe that, but I don't. I believe that I need to work with reality. And I think a lot of people are coming to that realization, you know. So, but that's a topic for another night.
So I'd like you to think right now. Take a moment. I'm going to play the piano. And I want you to think about something that you are feeling like, ah, oh, yes, I need this, I need this. And ask yourself, well, what is another possibility of what you might need around this? So let me just play for you for a moment. like saying I need what I have you know I, I talk to somebody and say we are going to be doing a program on November 7th where on a video conference and people are going to request something that I play music that relates to a theme and I need you to come and I need people to dance, <laughs> and I need people to want it, and I, I need people to publicize it, and I need it, I need it, I need it, I need it, and all of a sudden, it's like, oh, I contact this one, and she didn't answer me. Oh my God, I need an answer. Do I? Do I really? Nobody's uh, given a comment since uh, you invited them to look with Maybe them. people don't like this. <laughs> I don't need your approval. Maybe what I need is to live without your approval. Maybe what I need <laughs> is to live without the things that I think I need. Maybe what I gain by not getting what I need is what I need more. And then you never know what you're going to get. I mean, the fact is, life is just full of surprises. So tune into Granny Rocks every Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. Pacific time which is whatever it is at your time. And keep your eyes open because I'm going to have an announcement very soon about our November 7th event. And uh, But first, I need to figure out how you can buy tickets. <laughs> so, oh, my God. It's like, oh, my God. I have to... I don't know. I'm assuming that I need to get paid. That would be really nice for a change to get paid for what I do with the music and everything. But maybe I don't. Maybe I won't be able to figure it out. And maybe <laughs> I need to not have it. So think about something you really think that you need. And take a deep breath and say, if I recognize the fact that my projection of what I need may not necessarily be for my highest good or what I truly need, and so I will go towards what I think I need. That's the intention. Mm -hmm. And I will find a way to need what I have, even if it is telling me I need to change something because it's really not what I need and I need to make a life change. Yes. Oh, we have a wonderful comment. Uh, Paula says, very good for the soul, and I appreciate your blessings. Many exclamation marks. Thank you, Paula. You have our blessings. <laughs> Come back next week and watch our Beth Green's Magical Piano Improvisations every Thursday night. At That's tomorrow night. That is tomorrow night, and I just actually play the piano. And people find it relaxing. And maybe you need that. <laughs> More than you need to spend that time doing something else. Put your feet up. Tune in. Mm -hmm. Thank you, everybody, for joining us tonight. We love you. We appreciate mm -hmm. your comments. We appreciate your support. Yes. Bye-bye for now. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.